Okay, I know you want to read this Mad Lib you've been working on, so go ahead. It is a pleasure to see so many of my slimy friends here for my summer wacky party. A wacky party is where the things who get invited can relax <laughs> and do anything rugged they want. Today, the guest of honor is Sadie, which means she will have to wear the wacky hat, which is poop glued to a deer tick. <laughs> After we have the snazzy cake that Craig baked for us, we are all going to cha-cha in the yard... And the first one to find a dork gets the wacky prize, a genuine penis <laughs> made out of important riboflavin. Later, Tona will demonstrate the wacky way to cremate a walnut. If we all act lustily enough, we can have a real wacky time. Hello there, and welcome to Unboxing. This is a satellite show. Welcome to the basement where we open our mail. People send things to our P.O. box, and we open them up. And we also thank our donors. People go to welcometothebasementshow.com and contribute to support this show. People like these people. Reed, Joseph, Adam, William, Jeff, Anthony, Michael, Abraham, Pop Liturgy, Andrea, Luke, Brian, Carelock Services, Eric, Thomas, Kieran, Grant, Catherine, Nathan, Stephen, B.A., Mikey, D., Chris, Kai, J.P., Sean, and Maurizio. The rest of our donors later in the show. Thank you all. Why, yes, we have postcards. This is from Scarborough in the South Bay. Having some... Having some tire fish and chips? Tire fish? Fire fish? <laughs> fish and chips. I think we can say the fish and chips. Having some fish and chips by the sea. Keep up the very good work. All the best, Matt, Jojo, and the Mini Moo. Thank you. Eating the tire fish. La Lucha in Houston, Texas. Ooh, golf, gems, and chicken dinners. Two of my favorite things. What's up, Craig? Matt, I just ate a bunch of fried seafood. Have you seen Paris, Texas, the movie? We just talked about it in our previous episode. Hmm. Put a little English on that one. That's right. English well, is right back to you. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter over there in Orlando. On vacation, wish you were here. Reed and Mercedes and four kids. Oh, excellent. Aha! My foot caught it. Boy, I haven't broken out the letter openers in a while. No. But we have a sealed envelope from Andrew. Oh, look at those happy children being little delinquents. Probably throwing their snowballs at an Irishman. I want to thank you again for your wonderful show and to wish you a Merry Christmas. Thanks, Andrew. Most of all, I wanted you to have this card because the front reminds me of that scene from Blood of a Poet. Ah, yeah. The snowball fighting scene. Death yeah, by does. snowball fight. Let's open a package. All right, then. Why do I keep taking off my glasses when I know i got to read stuff? I don't know. This is from Emily. I hope you have something that plays cassettes. This is my all-time favorite movie soundtrack. We play at the nursing home I work at every week, and they love it. Keep up the great work. That soundtrack is from Guardians of the Galaxy. Awesome Mix Volume 1. Oh, wow. This might have been a Cassette Store Day release. Mm. Oh, it includes a digital album download. Nice. Oh, very nice, yes. I think the soundtrack was my favorite part of Guardians of the Galaxy. Their use of Moon Age Daydream in particular. <laughs> oh, I'm not in love, 10cc. Cherry Bomb. Ooh, child. Things are gonna get easier. Gonna get brighter, too. You know... <clears throat> the song Ooh Child, I love it so much that it always makes me happy. I could be in a car accident and the radio is left on and that song comes on and I'm there watching the steam rise out of my own intestines. I'd be like, Jesus. Someday, put it together and we'll get it undone. <laughs> I'll be so happy. Viewer questions. We have answers for you. Stephen Matthew Donor, does Beach Party count as a musical or just a movie with lots of music? This is a great question, Beach Party, right there. It's something I thought about myself when I was uh, watching it and editing it. I think it's a movie with lots of music. To qualify as a musical, the music has to be an important part of the story. There are certain musicals where people just burst out into song, and then there are also musicals where the singing is part of reality. Those are called diegetic musicals, mm -hmm. I believe. And this isn't a not musical just because of that. For instance, Phantom of the Paradise, I see as a musical, even though all of the performances take place in the context of normal reality. I disagree with you on both counts, because I think it has to do with the fact uh, that music is diegetic, or it is just people just start singing. So you draw it along those lines. I do draw it along those lines. Robin Faulkner writes, What were your favorite toys as kids? The Star Wars toys. 
pretty much. The Star Wars board game. I don't know if it's a good board game or not, but I remember really liking that game. We had the tall Snaggletooth, which I understand is a rare action figure. Mm -hmm. He was tall. And then there was a short Snaggletooth who had a red costume on. We had the tall one, and I remember its fate. I was outside of my house, right out there on the front stoop, and I was taking him, and I was just throwing him into the air. (laughs) And then I would catch him when he'd come back down, and I threw wild, and I heard him hit the roof, tumble down, and land in the gutter. And instead of thinking, I gotta have Dad get out the ladder and get that, I thought, well, that's gone. Yep. (laughs) Who knows how much that's worth these days? I'm sure some of our viewers could tell us. A lot of times you guys send us records. Matt listens to them, and then he talks about them. This is the point where the talking happens. Wayne Shorter, Moto Grosso Fio. This one's been sitting on my shelf for a long time, possibly more than a year. Finally listened to it. This is on Blue Note Records. Quite a lineup here. Chick Corea, John McLaughlin, Ron Carter. On the bass, Ron Carter. It's jazz, man. I don't know how to describe it, but it's the kind of... It, it feels like it's trying to find itself for a lot of side one. And then on side two, it just becomes... And I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get free jazz. I'd like to talk to someone who listens to jazz like that and goes, yeah. But they probably would say things like, listen to the notes that they're not playing. Mm-hmm. And I, it would just confuse like, me more. I'm going to listen to those notes that I'm not playing on Miles Davis's Kind of Blue. <laughs> Bye. When it finds a groove... It's interesting and enjoyable to listen to. Yeah. The 101ers, Elgin Avenue Breakdown. This was Joe Strummer's band before the clash. A skiffle band? It was not skiffle, no. Oh. It was pub rock. Oh, pub rock. I get this. Yeah. you confused. I had only been familiar with the song Sweet Revenge, which I heard many, many years ago. And I always wanted to listen to this record. And some thoughtful person sent it to me. I believe it was Dustin from Oli. And this is good stuff. There's some live recordings on here that are very lo-fi, but nevertheless... Uh, interesting to listen to, and Sweetie of the St. Moritz is a Billy Bragg song through and through. I bet wherever that was playing, whether it was on the John Peel show, I bet Billy Bragg, the teenage young man, was listening that night because it sounds exactly like a Billy Bragg. It sounds like the song Love Gets Dangerous by Billy Bragg. And we have an old favorite here that was sent by our buddy T.A. Epley, and that is Flamin' Groovies, Shake Some Action. This came out in 74. They seem to be throwing everything at the wall here. And mostly it's kind of throwback music. There are many songs in here where they sound like the Beatles. Particularly, yes, it's true. The main attraction here is a song, Shake Some Action, which sounds about 10 years ahead of its time. You can hear the entire REM IRS catalog in that song. That's a British band, if ever there was one. Look at that cover. Hold up that cover. England, England, England. <laughs> We got two more packages. Let's do it. Yes. You want the big one or the little one? I'll take the big one. That's Matt and I as Jay and Silent Bob. You know, I always appreciate packages from Aaron in Hell's Kitchen, and I always appreciate his whimsy. But Aaron, I do miss the drawings. Just just throwing that out there. You're gonna lose that girl. Yes, yes, you're gonna lose that girl. You're gonna lose lose that girl. girl. Asperger Beatles. (laughs) This is for Matt. This is for me. The uh, letter openers are getting the workout today. Craig, I'm going to assume that, like me, a lot of Welcome to the Basement viewers look to your show for ideas on what movies to add to their What to Watch Next list. Here's a book I think you guys might enjoy that added about 100 to my list. Movie Freak. My life watching movies by Owen Lieberman. I wrote a bunch of this guy's stuff. Oh, okay. Back when I used to get EW in the mail. I used to get spin in the mail. Oh, I used to too, yeah. Back in the June 2019 Spawn Unboxing episode, you introduced the Is the Word Smashing and Smashing Pumpkins a Verb or a Noun question. For a while now, I've been keeping a verb, noun, band, name list. Here are some of them. Counting Crows. Drowning Pool. The Flaming Lips. Flogging Molly. The Loving Spoonful. The Rolling Stones. The Talking Heads. Throbbing Gristle. Throwing Muses. The Traveling Wilburys. Tripping Daisy. The Flying Burrito Brothers. And Imagine Dragons. Can you or the viewer think of any I've missed? We got some stuff here. This is a box full of stuff from Vicky. Vicky. Named Vicky. 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 Esther Victoria Blodgett. All right. Dear Matt Craig and Tona, I hope you enjoy these gifts. Some catnip toys. So who's that for? You, me, or Tona? Our cat loves these, and hopefully yours will too. The cats. Uh-huh. The cats. 
My husband Alex has been a big fan of your show for years and recently got me hooked as well. It would be great if you could wish him a happy 37th birthday, January 16th, and good luck as he starts his first semester of culinary school. Finally, someone contacted us in advance for a birthday wish. Now it's actually going to come out before his birthday. Yes, Alex! Best of luck at culinary school and happy birthday. Happy birthday, bud. Oh, licorice wheels. Here's some postcards. Florida. 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 I, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and for a little change of pace, Florida. Eek, eek, eek. Oh, this is cool. Oh, these are little movie decorations. There's popcorn and soda and ice cream and stuff. I guess you... These these are, like are these appliques? It looks like they're buttons. Well, there's pictures of buttons, movie but they're, munchies. they're not buttons. Are they, what is this? And then we've got some dog faces. Oh, these are for you. Oh, give me those cats back. Those aren't cats. Those are snacks. Oh, okay. I'm losing my mind. Are they edible? No, I think you're supposed to put them on clothing. I see. Buttons. Kind of. They're buttons. I for, guess. For my button collection. Thank you for this box of surprises. Now, if you've sent a package... And you haven't seen it on this show, if you sent us a Christmas card, don't fret. Because here on The Basement, we're used to celebrating Christmas in February. Our next episode of Unboxing will come out February 14th, Valentine's Day. Mm. Christmas in February. Isn't that a Lou Reed song? I don't know. I think it's on his New York album. And now Craig will tell us the rest of our donors. David, Graham, Kendall, Mark, Jenny, Robert, John, Grant, Tabitha, Christopher, Jonathan, Andrew, Corey, Danielle, Sarah... Vincent, Laura, Bridget, Eden, Jared, and Austin, Reiner, Luke, Neil, and Grace. Thank you. Graham. Graham. You said Graham. Graham? You said Graham. I didn't mean to say Graham. I know you didn't mean to. I'm going to go home and listen to some Grand Parsons. I need some Grand Grand Crackers. Grand Crackers. (laughs) Which I got from my Graham. Hey, man, you need to get with the program. Eight years of doing Welcome to the Basement, that means we've watched a lot of movies, we've made a lot of episodes. And it's at this point in the show when we recommend one for you to watch or rewatch. We just had our year-end Megasode, and so the episode that I'd like to recommend is our very first Megasode from way back in 2013, where we watched The Great Train Robbery and The Red Balloon. Ah, yes. That's where this tradition all began. You might recall that at the end of season one, we did a live stream. Which was fun. Which was fun, but I don't feel like the content of that is kind of part of our show canon. Yeah. So I wanted to make an, a show episode that kind of looked back on the year. I have fond memories of watching The Great Train Robbery because I it was only ten minutes long, but we mm-hmm. jumped into that thing with both feet oh, yeah. and riffed the hell out of it. <laughs> There's a button at the end of this video where you can watch The Great Train Robbery, and there's other buttons you can click and watch other episodes. And thank you for joining us in unboxing all this year, and we look forward to seeing you next year with more boxes and more lists of names. Goodbye. But before you go, watch this.